In times of disaster, we must be ready. And with kids, sometimes those things can happen more often than not. So as it's Wednesday, we are getting ready for the first one of the year, Talking Just Kids, as we are getting our first aid kit ready so when those disasters strike, we'll be prepared. Dr. Sean Matthews joins us this morning as the director or one of for Just Kids Emergency Limited. And Tash and I are going to explore that first, kit, first aid kit thoroughly to make sure we have a good 2024 and beyond. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> good morning Excellent. and welcome. Good morning, thank you for having me. A pleasure. I know that Tasha has questions, as oh. I do, even though we don't have kids that we have to take care of, but we know a first aid kit is a great thing to have. So let's jump right into the necessity of it. Why have one on hand? So, for sure, like things that tend to happen, tend to happen in the household most often. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, you know, a car accident too, but most things accidents happen in households. So that's usually where you need these things, right? To get yourself organized if you need to go somewhere after. At least you could start the process, whether it's cuts, a broken hand, making a sling, something like that. Those are things that you could tackle at home, make the person more comfortable while you're going to get medical attention. Because mm. addressing it at the start is very important because that helps along the way. Helps the doctors as well and helps the child or the adults because not only children get injured, Adults tend to do it too. Every day. Getting into yeah. the silly season of carnival, it tends to happen. Or life because you're clumsy like me. Yeah. <laughs> so you mentioned on the way. So aside from having a face aid kit at home, would you recommend we have one in our car as well? I would actually suggest that. That's a really good thing to have. Because um, if you're at the beach, something it's usually you're driving somewhere, having one in the car is actually very important. So you could just pull it out, keep it in your trunk, just check it every now and again because tend to, if you get a sting at the beach or something and mm. you use the medication, then you forget to restock and then something else happens. So it's all about kind of just checking it every few months, making sure nobody was taking something out of it, one, one, and then mm. all of a sudden something is Nothing done. Nothing is there. Yeah. Well, let's get into it quite literally. <laughs> what we have in terms of contents of a good first aid kit. Sure. So this first aid kit has a few things. I'll just separate things a lot. So, Couple of hours go to medication first. Okay. So two of the things we tend to need is something for allergic reactions, so antihistamine, so something like Periton, right? You get a sting, lips start to swell, eyes swelling, or you took some medic child took some medication, eyes swelling, breaking out in a rash. I would say I prefer you give that and then go to the hospital or go to the doctor. Right, so I'm just gonna take this yes, here. Sir. So we can see, see right. there yeah. we go. Um, I always rather you give a dose because mm -hmm. that's going to get you there and the doctor can assess or because the worst case is, hey, it wasn't an allergic reaction. You just gave a dose by accident. Okay, one dose. Cool, Maybe. not a big problem. I, I prefer you give it than not give it. All right. And, we, and waiting to see, I want to see how it's going to develop. Give it. Sounds like a plan. We also have some antibiotic cream. It doesn't have to be Bactrovan, but there's mm -hmm. several other ones you can get. Fusidin, um, Mipurcin, that if you have a cut, dirty cut, especially fell in a drain or something like that, you wash it out. You know my life. <laughs> 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 we'll talk about that after. Yes. So yeah, so that's a good thing to have because you just put it on your wound as well, mm -hmm. just to help prevent infection because doing that early o'clock will help prevent anything happening down That's the line. Good. Okay, and these are things you can get over the counter, the antibiotic cream? The antibiotic, well, Bactroban, no. Mm -hmm. But there are a couple of antiseptic creams and stuff that you can okay. get uh, over the counter. So that's one of those. Then, of course, your usual, everybody knows their band-aids, you know, your plasters, mm -hmm. having multiple sizes, because you never know what size you're actually gonna need. Right. So you range from big to small. There's also the waterproof ones. There. Yeah, and there's some nice ones. fun ones yeah. too. I don't have any fun ones here. Theme for Christmas, theme for the holidays. <laughs> yeah, you get all the children love those. Yes. And then we have what could be, when things get a little more dramatic, Oof. some abdominal um, tampons, which are actually really good at ab absorbing blood. So if you have a big oh. wound. I was just about to say, no, you have to use proper, clear, Translations for us. Please. You said abdominal, abdominal tampons. Yeah, yeah. so that's so it's just bas basically saying that this is a super absorbent pad mm -hmm. that you could put on a wound that will soak up a lot of the blood wow. and actually help in terms of the clotting. Fun fact, didn't know those exist. No, not yeah, yeah, you can actually get them. And you can actually just purchase first aid kits that will actually have some of those as okay. well. Okay. Or you can actually, the other thing you can get if you can't get that 
it's just lots of gauze. Right. All right. Lots of gauze. And then, of course, a special one that some guys may not know about is actual tampon, right. which is really good, as you had said before, for nosebleeds. Mm -hmm. Put it up there, that's going to create pressure and it's going to stop blood or any other kind of puncture wound. Right. That's actually really good to stop in blood. And even pads, because if people don't have these things at home, mm -hmm. most have a female in the house that may have pads or tampons. So right. in case of emergency, you can use that. And it's actually usually packaged very nicely and wow. sterile. Technically, that's a no-brainer for us, but yeah. I've never actually thought of using it in an emergency situation, mm -hmm. except for that one time in school when I spilled juice and that's all I had. But yeah, <laughs> that makes a lot of sense. So that's an sense. another thing. Then we have a couple, a couple other things. So this is actually an instant ice compress, okay. right? Which again, you would have to purchase specifically for a first aid kit. But in case you don't have that, so if you fell, you have big swelling, hit mm -hmm. your head, crack that open, break it, put it on icy head okay. or icy wound. But if you don't have that, most people will be able to get some ice. So I usually suggest you just Keep a Ziploc bag in your right. face, okay. you go and grab ice, mm -hmm. but then, even if you're at the beach and I say you're using your, your car zone, put some ice in it right. and put it on Interesting. And while you're going to help with the swelling. Sounding good, man. Wow. I feel more prepared than I realize <laughs> yeah. because a lot of these things, as you rightly say, we have around the house, we yeah. can definitely get over the counter. So mm -hmm. not feeling too shaky right now. Yeah, you can get some stuff. And then we actually have just a couple other things that tend to be, as I say, for more the dramatic instances. So this is actually a triangular bandage. Mm -hmm. So this actually is for if you need, you've broken your hand, you have some sort of injury to create a sling. Right. Mm -hmm. Now, again, you may not get this, but something anybody could also get is just basically a roll of crepe bandage. You could get that in any pharmacy mm -hmm. and literally just make a loop. Yeah. Sling it over, and that at least will hold the hand until you could get somewhere else. I have to else. Google that. Understand. I'm being very honest. But I love that you're giving us these simple alternatives, mm -hmm. because a lot of the times we may not be thinking about what we need until it is that time. Yeah. So the simple version is definitely going to stick. And the nice thing is to, about a first aid kit is the stuff is clean. So quite often right. when things happen, you're going to get a, a, let's say, a broken hand, and then it's a dirty, muddy mm -hmm. T-shirt coming mm -hmm. on the wound, and that's just... A recipe for infection so it's actually good to have these things there that you have that are clean and sterile I'm definitely going to be popping off to the pharmacy after this <laughs> and making sure I mean of course hopefully I can get one as aesthetically pleasing <laughs> as this as well <laughs> but definitely for your car for your home and the I business mean, place as well uh, should actually have that as well. That's mm. a good place because accidents happen we'll be anyway. Judging me for living in my car, but I'll be prepared. <laughs> I have a question, Dr. Matthews, because outside of these basics, do we have any things that we should, as Caribbean people, because they're more likely to happen to us, think of adding to our first aid kit? So, I mean, the other things would be you can have, you tend to have it in your household anyways, things like, you know, your pan, all your painkillers in case mm -hmm. of any little injury and just giving something just uh, anti-inflammatory once you don't have any allergies to it, right. something like that. So you could actually give some pain relief to the person that may have an injury while they're going to get medical attention. And another little thing to also have is a scissors, which I now realize my scissors, you see, I check to restock. Mm -hmm. I don't have my scissors in here. So that, that's also right. very and important. And, all those yeah. that makes sense. and it because makes sense too. Some things are missing because as you said, you never know. Some may be like, oh yeah, I'm just going to take this also the first day, kids. Yeah, and, and you have a five-year-old daughter that likes to do arts and crafts. It tends to <laughs> come and take scissors out. And on that note, what do you suggest when you think of storing our first aid kits? Right, so exactly. So that's actually important because as I say, it's about having it somewhere that you can access easily. It's actually somewhere you want your, because it may be you injured and asking your child to go in there. So you don't want to have it somewhere that the child absolutely can't access. And that's right. why you don't keep anything dangerous in it. Mm -hmm. But you do, so you want it to be able somewhere that everybody can access. So having it somewhere, whether it's in the kitchen or just somewhere in a little cupboard, just put away, but not locked up, you right. want it to be able to access. Um, that's why we're not keeping anything in it that is dangerous to kids so they'll just go and take a nice thing about these things that childproof so they're not going to be just opening and drinking a whole bunch of antihistamine and getting real sleepy <laughs> <laughs> definitely thank you so much dr matthews for being with us this morning dr sean matthews director of just kids emergency limited they're with us every single wednesday and trust me you don't want to miss any of these segments because you're going to be learning so much it's going to keep you and your family safe healthy and Happy. We'll be back in a few right here on the Now Morning Show. Stay tuned.
times are plenty, we must be grateful. In times of sorrow, 